Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mihai Movilesko. I'm the uh, Head of National Marketing and Admissions with Digital Hub Academy and uh, I'm honored to have Brandon Keegan, Senior Lecturer in Digital Marketing with Manchester Metropolitan University, join me today. Brandon, hello, welcome. Hello, good morning. Uh, anything you want to add to that uh, about yourself? Um, uh, two things really, I suppose uh, I, let's make it three. Uh, one of the first things is I was one of the first UK graduates um, in digital marketing at, at bachelor's at degree level uh, in the UK okay. because Manchester Metropolitan University had a the first ever degree in digital marketing and uh, there was two students on the very first year which was me and one other chap and um, uh, the other student he uh, he kind of got a job halfway through with a, with a very profitable company. So um, that's one thing on my CV. Number two is that I've been teaching in Manchester Metropolitan University for nearly 10 years. Uh, originally, I was brought in to um, cover any online, um, online marketing parts of traditional marketing modules. And then in the past 10 years, we've now uh, we've got lots and lots and lots of digital teaching, which obviously reflects the way in which the industry has gone. Um, there's a lot of uh, focus now on, on how in digital innovation has changed uh, the role and the job of the marketer. So there's plenty of stuff for, uh, for me to teach to talk about at the moment. Um, and around the same time, I started my PhD, uh, which was looking at uh, the use of social media analytics in terms of decision making, in terms of developing campaigns. Okay, so, cool. Uh, quite a bit of a busy couple of years, I would say. So, so hopefully, I'm in a good position to talk to uh, talk to you today and talk to the students who might be watching uh, about the importance of studying digital marketing. Well, let's start with that. the The biggest question we always get when presenting uh, the Digital Hub Academy program is, what is digital marketing? So. From the standpoint of the graduate and the teacher, uh, how would you define it? How would you explain it to prospective candidates? Okay, well, you have to think about it in terms of uh, the D word. The D word represents a digital platform. So if you have a digital platform, you've got a method for communicating with customers, with stakeholders, with people who might be interested in, in the products and services that you're trying to offer. Okay. Now, a digital platform could be anything that has a digital interface or that has an interface that you can control and you can modify strategically to send a positive message about the products and services that you have. Now, one example which um, people seem to overlook all the time is something as simple as when you go to the bank, you go to take some money out and what do you have in front of you? You have a big digital screen. So there is anywhere that there's a digital screen, there will be eyeballs looking at them and therefore there's an opportunity to have a conversation with potential customers. There's an opportunity to have a conversation to portray a positive message or a, or, or a supportive message based around what a brand is trying to do. So the digital part represents the platforms, okay? If you think about the opposite of that, you can have traditional, uh, you can have outdoor, you can have billboards, and you could have magazines. That would be the non-digital uh, platforms that are involved. But we're focused solely on the digital platforms that we can control, we can maintain, we can optimize, and we can use um, uh, to great effect. The marketing side of, of the phrase obviously refers to um, how companies try and position themselves in terms of raising awareness of what they do and raising awareness of what their products are and uh, what their services are, but also uh, representations of what the brand is doing, how the brand is perceived, uh, and what the brand is trying to do in terms of their competitors. So marketing is not just advertising, which is a common mistake that we see with a lot Correct. of uh, potential students. They think it's, oh, it's just about creating a lovely ad. Uh, a creative campaign and putting it out there. It's not just that. It's about identifying uh, potential within the products that you have. You might want to introduce new lines of products. You might want to optimize. You might want to, uh, to take advantage of one of your competitors, perhaps. You might say that one of your competitors is not doing the job very well, so your marketing strategy might be to overtake them by introducing something new to market. Or you might want to have something which uh, reflects consumer sentiment. You might want to introduce new products at a key time 
uh, such as the pandemic situation that we're in at the moment, something along the lines of a home delivery service for products because people can't get out. Now that's a, that's a marketing strategy. Uh, yeah. So marketing is not just advertising, it, it's a much bigger process. So the role of the marketer will be considering all of these things and digital marketing allows us the digital platforms to allow us to do these things. Perfect. Now, building on that, uh, it's a very exciting field, but why should students choose a career in digital marketing? What are the, the main sell selling points for this? Number one, it's exciting <laughs> because it's very new and because this is where the industry has moved. When I started my PhD 10 years ago, nobody really knew about social media as a marketing yeah. tool. It was yeah, I remember new. those times. Exactly. Back then, we used to use something called Bebo. I don't know if you remember Bebo, but yeah. <laughs> hey, it doesn't even exist anymore. It's gone. So things move very fast and the, the, yeah. the pace of change in digital is absolutely fascinating. Well, it's fascinating to me because new platforms are introduced all the time and, and there's a potential there for, for, for supporting the marketing role. And I think that is fascinating. Uh, number two, I'd say that the industry is, uh, that industry is screaming out for people who have knowledge and skills in terms of digital mm -hmm. marketing. Yeah. And if you have a good understanding of how digital marketing works, and some of uh, how we can use and manipulate some of these platforms, I'd say you're in a much better position uh, to gain employment with brands or to be able to do things, uh, mm -hmm. creative and clever things with brands with a good knowledge of how digital works. The third thing I would say is look at the consumer base across the, the globe at the moment. Um, we cannot survive without our phones. We cannot survive without digital platforms, uh, without websites, without finding things through search engines. The customers yeah. are there. So if you want to make money and if you want to make a positive impact with your marketing strategy, you need to make sure that you are online. If I Google a brand and a brand isn't there, I won't purchase with that, with that yeah. brand. I won't buy their product. Correct. It's very good for you to be in there. The final point I would make is that digital marketing is not rocket science. It is actually quite complex in how it appears, yeah. but the strategy behind it is very similar to traditional marketing strategies uh, and how we use some of these different platforms. It might change slightly between what you would use with search engine marketing and what you would use with social media marketing, but it's not impossible. It's not a tech job. You're not programming. You're not coding. It's more of a strategic job. You are coming up with ideas and you're implementing ideas using very, very uh, sophisticated platforms. So I'd say there's a sweet spot there between creativity and technology within the role of the, of the digital market. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, candidates uh, having the impression that you have to be a code genius or an IT geek to make it in digital marketing. So I'm very happy that you touched on that. You don't well, need- I, I was a developer. I was a developer yeah. and a designer, um, and I was a coder, and I realized that this part of the industry, the online marketing strategy part of the industry is much more exciting. And uh, these days okay. we don't really, we don't hand code things anymore. What we do is we, there's lots of, uh, there's lots of clever ways around it, clever and, and cheap ways around building websites. So what the digital marketer needs to do is, is needs to be able to speak to the people who are building a website, but also need to be able to speak to the consumers. So having a knowledge and an awareness of coding would be great, but it's not essential. The important thing to be aware mm -hmm. of is the knowledge of data and how data and analytics helps yeah. us to, to make those decisions. Yeah. So we've got a partnership between Manchester Met and uh, Digital Hub Academy and also our uh, uh, other academies. Uh, can you detail on the connection between uh, Manchester Metropolitan University and Digital Hub Academy and how that's been going on? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, uh, I have been involved with uh, DHA for uh, about a year now in terms of developing the paperwork mm -hmm. and uh, just making sure that the modules that we teach here, this room right here, uh, yeah. the modules that we teach in Manchester Metropolitan University reflect the teaching that you uh, that you will receive 
uh, through DHA. So we've done all the checks and all of the, uh, the investigations to make sure that the learning process is the same uh, and the outcomes of each module is the same and the structure of the course is exactly the same as what we do here. Now I am uh, the link tutor for this program so I've obviously been through the whole process of making sure that on, mm -hmm. on Manchester Metropolitan University side we're happy that what DHA is doing mirrors what we were doing in the UK. So it's essentially the same type of degree, the same type of award, uh, but just not physically in the building here. Okay. Uh, teaching obviously will be supported by, um, uh, by some of the staff at DHA, but also some Manchester Metropolitan University staff will, will be taking part in that as well. Myself included, I'll be checking in occasionally uh, just to say hi to some of the students for, for a few guest, guest talks and, and things like that. Perfect. Um, as a senior lecturer, you've had contact with tons of students by now. So from your perspective, what would be the main traits, the main uh, characteristics, characteristics sorry, um, of, of a good student uh, that joins these, uh, these programs? Okay. Uh, for me, the best student doesn't necessarily need to be the smartest. The best student is the one who has enthusiasm. And if a student is enthusiastic, I think that outweighs any kind of uh, results they've gotten in school and any mm -hmm. kind of uh, exam performance. We obviously need people to be able to, uh, to communicate in writing skills, but those skills will develop over time. And one of the best ways is, is through going through a series of written assignments and discussions with your tutors. Uh, that's the best way to develop those skills. But at the beginning, for a student who hasn't even walked into the building or checked in yet, if you have enthusiasm, if you have, dare I say, passion for the industry, I think that is one of the most important traits that you'll need. Um, so awareness of digital within the industry would also be useful. So I would like to see that if students are coming into my uh, university, when I see them for the very first time, that they have a LinkedIn profile already up and running. They have a Twitter account. Uh, they're following uh, key commentators who are talking about the industry. They're aware of specific trade magazines. They're aware of what's happening in the news. Where if I ask students at the beginning of the class, right, what's happened this week? They should be able to answer that question because they should be interested in the area. So enthusiasm and interest, hopefully passion uh, for the industry. That is what I would recommend. That was what I, I would like to see in students. Um, if prior experience is possible, it's not always possible at undergraduate level, we understand that, but if anybody's done something as simple as built a Facebook page for a group or for mm -hmm. a brand or for a company or for their uncle's shop, uh, if you've done something like that, I would love to see that as well because that shows you've actually dipped your toe in the water and you've started to kind of build some digital platforms for, for, yeah. a, strategic, um, for a strategic digital marketing reason. Great. Um, one of the things that we try to do for our prospect is show them a career path. Uh, so from your experience and the alumni that you keep in contact with, can you give us some examples as to where do they work? What roles do they uh, fill right now? How long do we have? Um, okay, as so long as you want. <laughs> well, Manchester is um, is obviously it's quite a big city, and um, hopefully the students will get to visit and we'll, we'll come and see you guys here in the building. But within uh, the locality of Manchester, we have some very big brands. We've got some very big digital agencies. Now, there's two kind of destinations that our graduates tend to go to. You either tend to go agency side, where you work for a specific marketing mm -hmm. agency yeah. in a digital role, or you tend to go client side, where you work for a brand, and you're the brand manager who sometimes contracts the agencies to do some work, or you, or you do a lot of the marketing job uh, for that brand. So you either go agency side or you go client side. Uh, client side, uh, some of our graduates... They work for Manchester United, which is just down the road. Wow. Uh, Manchester City, we have a big connection with them. Um, we do a lot of research with Manchester City Football Club. Um, but we also have brands like Kellogg's, which is the, uh, the cereal company. We have Coca-Cola has a base here. Um, we have a lot of students work for Lexus and uh, Bentley, which are two big car automotive firms. 
Whereas agency side, we have some students working for an agency called McCann Erickson. McCann Erickson is one of the biggest uh, global agencies, um, yeah. advertising agencies on the planet. Uh, McCann Erickson has a series of subsidiary companies, uh, which a lot of students work for as well, called iProspect, Cara, and uh, Mindshare, MediaShare. Um, there's a couple of other big companies called Mediacom. Um, and by big, I mean there is thousands of employees in this company. Yep. And within those, they all serve as different clients. So some of the clients they serve as could be could be Bentley and could be Manchester United and could be uh, people like that. So, so our graduates tend to do particularly well. And I think the percentage we had for graduate employment last year was something like 78 to 80 percent of our graduates um, sure. at undergraduate level were, were employed within a year. Uh, purely because, if I point back to my earlier uh, reply, is that industry is screaming out for people in this area because it's so uh, niche, it's so specific, and it's so new that yeah. the workforce at the moment, who've been in advertising for 20 years, they don't really know about this stuff. They need people yeah. who are on Bebo. They, they need people who are on Snapchat because the executives tend to be 50 plus and they don't understand how Snapchat works. What they need right. is young, bright, enthusiastic, energetic people to come in and introduce these new ideas uh, to come up with creative campaigns. Why do you think that digital is so popular right now? Um, what do you think that attracts uh, the the young people towards this field of course we have influencers we have uh, those brands but what do you think is the uh, key aspect that attracts them to this um well i suppose i put it down to well we both remember how we used to dial up to the internet through the telephone yeah. line do you remember that noise that it used to make yeah awful yeah. noise <laughs> yeah that awful noise that went over ages so what we have is this concept of anybody born after 1992 is referred to as the digital native yeah. and the digital native uh, just refers to children who didn't have to listen to that terrible noise um, they were instantly plugged in as soon as they were uh, within eight to ten years old they, they had a device available to available to them or there was a tablet there was something there that, mm -hmm. that was a straightforward connection they were plugged in by the time they were 10 years old this generation is used to that and has that memory that they're always online and you can always find the answer to what you need online and this is built into the psyche of this generation but yeah. now they are it's an expectation it has to be there a brand has to be online if they're not online they're not doing the job well enough Whereas if a brand doesn't appear on a search engine results page, then they certainly wouldn't invest in the brand. But equally, what we find is with digital native as, as a generation, they're more likely to engage with brands online versus older generations. So the 50-year-old media executive is less reluctant to tweet directly to yeah. a company because they think, oh, I'm not going to share any of my, my personal information with them whereas younger generations are more likely to. Now, that also means that there's lots of potential customers there of that yeah. age range, which means the job itself is a younger generation, uh, a younger consumer base, a younger digital marketing uh, executive is gonna be a bit more familiar with how to speak to their peers. And I think that's where the appeal comes, that there's so much information flying around in the digital sphere that younger people are more uh, aware of it. They understand it better than other generations. And I think that's why it becomes more appealing to them. And that's why, I mean, the classic example is the idea that the older generation don't get something like Snapchat. They don't get it because they can't understand the navigation. They can't understand how to yeah. use it. They sign up for it, and then it becomes, it's a dormant account. They last for six months, and then they close it down. I suppose TikTok is the new example. Again, the older generation can't figure out TikTok. You're nodding your head. I'm guessing you're in that category as well. Um, coming close, honestly. Coming, very coming close. close right. Yeah, okay. Snapchat was beyond me for some time, even though I worked in uh, digital. Uh, but I could feel the, the gap between myself and younger colleagues. So right. 10 years younger, and it was second nature to them. To me, it was rocket science, like you said in the beginning. Well, I mean, uh, coming back to an earlier point that we mentioned, uh, some of your students are worried about not being able to hand code websites. 
um, yeah. they can use Snapchat and all other Correct. people can. So, so there's different skills there in different areas um, that this digital native generation are fully aware of. And I think that's where the appeal is, that they're very, very fluent in terms of yeah. technology, in terms of how to use it. What I'd like to see is that when we get students into the, into the classroom, we start to unpack the strategy behind that and how you can mm -hmm. use marketing as a strategy with these new platforms uh, to use these skills, which are already built into their psyche and built into their DNA uh, because they're a digital native generation. Great. Uh, we unfortunately are going through a pandemic right now. Um, but I think there is a plus side professionally to this uh, because of the attention that digital marketing has got uh, during the last six months. What's your take on this? How has the uh, pandemic affected the, uh, the future of digital marketing? Has it pushed it forward? Has it been an advantage? Yeah, I think, um, uh, I think out of all the industries who've been affected by the pandemic, I think uh, digital marketing uh, has, has come out of this quite well because the manner in which it's been used and the manner in which brands have been using digital platforms uh, to try and um, uh, to circumvent some of the restrictions that have happened on a local basis, I think have been, have been excellent. So this idea of local deliveries from uh, restaurants and cafes and things like that has been enabled by uh, a lot of digital platforms, specifically to, through mobile apps and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think the manner in which the technology has been used and adapted is commendable. And I think that's why we're seeing an uptick in kind of online sales, in terms mm -hmm. of e-commerce statistics, yeah. we're seeing lots and lots more. So there's lots of, lots of money being spent there within this aspect. But I would take my hat off to some of the local companies and local brands, small to medium-sized enterprises, that have used these platforms quite effectively and quite cleverly. So while it might look like digital marketing has sales have gone up, which obviously you might expect, people are not going outside. I think the real celebration should be in terms of how local towns and cities have managed to use digital very effectively within their community. Yeah. So it's not like global brands like Coca-Cola or, or Manchester United have done a great job and they're, and they're selling more tickets, they're selling more products. Um, I think that we should be looking, paying more attention to localized community uh, use of digital. Great. And I hope that continues in the future. Yeah, me too. I think it's been a great way to uh, kickstart the digital revolution in some places where uh, digital marketing really hasn't been used to its full potential or nearly at all, unfortunately, in some cases. Um, what would your message be for future DHA MMU candidates uh, what would you like to say to them? Um, if you want to see what the course is like, and if you want to see what the teaching is like or the experience that you'll be having, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> because a lot of what I do is I share a lot of students' work in the classroom. Uh, so you can actually see some of this. And I'll be tweeting about what I'm teaching this week. This week I'm looking at corporate social responsibility and ethics in terms of digital marketing. So how are companies uh, engaging with uh, local community projects or helping out with them um, uh, to try and do have environmentally friendly practices within their within their advertising uh, to raise awareness of that and also brands who are doing things like uh, supporting local charities. So I'm looking at how that happens on, on uh, through the many digital platforms. So follow us on Twitter and get in touch if you want, if you have any specific questions. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, yeah. The only thing that's stupid is if you don't ask it. So yeah. just reach out, get in touch. If you can't find us online, we're not doing our job well enough. Uh, so you should be able to find lots of us online. You should be able to find lots of examples uh, of uh, some of the, the work that we do within the classroom. And then finally, I'd say keep an eye on the job recruitment pages or any kind of recruitment agency pages and have a look for the titles of the jobs that are coming up at the moment. You'll notice some trends. You'll notice uh, there'll be a strong focus on email marketing big focus on digital marketing executives, digital marketing strategists, social yeah. media marketing manager. If you had a look at all the jobs that were advertised uh, in Romania or, or anywhere really, I guarantee over half of them will be within the digital marketing sector. Yeah, That's how it is today. 
it will possibly increase. And then by the time that you graduate, you'll be looking to walk into one of these jobs uh, or you will walk into one of these jobs uh, with a good education behind you and a good experience uh, that you've had for a couple of years uh, to be able to, to show off your skills. Brendan, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, as Brendan said, reach out. If you have any questions for us, for him, uh, you can find us online on your main social media platforms. We're always here. So see you soon. Thanks again. Bye now.